Hello and welcome to the session. I am Akshay Kumar and I'll be discussing with you in today's session about data, information, knowledge and wisdom. The topic seems to be very interesting and very lengthy. To begin with, let us try to deal with what we call data. Well, the word data, right, and if it is singular, it is called datum, right, which is a unit of data. So this term has been derived from means one or more symbols. So data technically represents symbols. So a data bit is consisting of a number of symbols, all right, and it represents raw facts. That's all, raw facts, facts of information. Data does communicate something. For example, if I'm talking about a place, okay, so Delhi or maybe a school in Delhi or particular uh, university in Delhi, so I'm talking about a place, okay, so it is communicating. Things, maybe a computer, a laptop, a monitor, so things, it communicates, so uh, there is information, I mean it's not information, data is not information, but data is about things also. And then events, they can be sports meet, right? So data has to communicate that there is a sports meet, but on what date, right? So probably a different set of data is there. What time, what place? So all these things then need to be correlated. So data is each individual entity about this particular event, right? When we relate it, probably we might create information or we create a complex data itself, okay? Depends on the situation. It can be a symbol, sign or measure in the form which can be directly captured by a person or maybe a machine, okay? For example, alphabet, numbers, and these days you are dealing with QR codes, you are just scanning, okay? You are scanning the QR code and the numbers automatically come onto your screen. So that, that is the data somewhere in the form of QR code available, okay? And then we have optic, uh, optical character recognition, MICR kind of recognition, which you have in bank checks. Similarly, many malls have this kind of, or uh, shopping malls you go, and uh, the grocery store will be automatically scanning the barcode, etc. So once again, it is pr producing data. It is using data. Only. So barcode is data, right? And the scanner basically reads that particular data. Some raw data, other raw data can be, for example, uh, 25th February 2012. This is a complete data about a particular date, right? Uh, something like 23,000 is a number. 49 out of 50. Now that's uh, a fishy number, right? You all know about this particular number, 49 out of 50, or 90 out of uh, 100, or 99 out of 100, or 100 out of 100. You all are aware about that particular data. And maybe a name like Asad, Mohan, and many, many more. Not related to uh, other things. So data is technically not related to other things. That's what we want to say. So data, however, need to be linked up, okay? Need to be linked up and then it will be moving to a different domain. So data is very, very important for any organization to collect, right? So we'll be collecting data for many things, okay? But before that we say, so finally data is a fact or statement or event without any relation to other information, right? So this is now, uh, there is lot many, uh, I mean, we would like to define data with the help of an example. And uh, uh, this example is about the student data which is being shown. Now student data may consist of enrollment number. Now each enrollment number is data about a student. Then the student name consists of the characters, right, alphabets. Right, so multiple alphabet makes student name. Now student name is another piece of, inf uh, of, piece of data which consists of characters. Enrollment number may be numerical data, right? It can be character data also because uh, enrollment number, if I'm saying 20169 each of this uh, alphabet, uh, each of this can also be represented in the form of digits, right? 
and digits are ASCII characters, ASCII characters, right? So in computer, even numbers, right, can be represented with the help of ASCII digits. And many of you will notice this particular thing. Suppose one of you is doing uh, web programming and you are entering some uh, number over there, let's say it is asking for transfer of, uh, let's say what amount you want to transfer, right? Suppose in a banking application you are doing it and you are entering a number. That number actually is being fed as digits, digits of ASCII. And those ASCII digits then get converted into uh, the actual number and uh, by the computer program. So we don't have to worry about that, but then uh, you need to know the characteristics of data. And this is one characteristics in computer. The data can be either a number or it can be alphabets, right? Like uh, strings, like student name is uh, going to be a string. Then we have marks obtained. So if you are uh, using an Excel sheet or you are using any, spreadsheet, any other spreadsheet software, then uh, you can enter the numbers also. So 20, 40, like that, they are being represented. Okay, examination fee, it, then uh, this, is, this, is, uh, this is a typical data which require to be, uh, to be uh, along with this data, you need to say in what, uh, what, what, uh, what form, like uh, money, rupees or, or dollars or something, something in that particular sense, right? So, and finally the grades which are allotted to you, A, B, C, D, E. So they all represent an example. Each one of them is an example of data. And collectively, if I see one, uh, one row, in this particular uh, particular sheet will belong to a particular data items for an individual. So they are related in some sense in this particular thing. But are they communicating something? Yes, they are communicating something that this, uh, the enrollment number, this, whose name is this, and who, who he or she has obtained some marks, paid the examination fee, and the grade which has been awarded is E. So that is, it is communicating some bit, bits and pieces of information. It's not uh, complete information, but some, some basic uh, data is being, uh, some, something is being communicated in this particular data. So this is in technicality raw data. Now, many more information, uh, if I want to convert this particular data into uh, some information, many more things need to be added. First of all, uh, this example data has to be put into proper, proper context or perspective, like this data belongs to whom, right? So this is what it can be. For example, it, this data may belong to a study center. Let's say the name of that study center is Kurukshetra University, which is a study center of uh, maybe IGNU or uh, uh, distance learning, another distance learning program of Kurukshetra University itself. Regional center, maybe Karnal in this particular case, so maybe this data relates to IGNU, right? So like that. So some data is there, Karnal, and the code of the regional center is there. Then the subject code is there, CIT002, which basically is certificate in information technology. The date information is there. So now the data has been put into some perspective, but had it become information? probably still some kind of information is to be derived from this particular data. Although there is some information available in this data, if you can see very clearly, that for CIT2 course, okay, these are the marks of the students, maybe 10 students which are listed over here, and what grades they, these students have got. So this is some very elementary bit of information, which by putting a context by bringing in some kind of context to data, we are able to extract at least some very elementary information. But information definition does not stop here only. Information de definition goes even further. So what is information? Information is the processed data, or at least the data which has been put or uh, integrated and contextualized, okay? So appearance of information has an important effect to the information user. Now, how information you are, uh, you, you may display information, uh, the two most common uh, forms of displaying information is in the form of tables or in the form of graphics. Okay, so we would like to show you both, both these forms, but then they are very important forms of representation of data uh, information. 
all right the presentation of information plays important role in its interpretation so we would like to see how this particular thing happens like uh, how the interpretation of uh, informa uh, information can be done with the help of uh, the graphics or with the help of raw tables and finally constructive information depends on the proper interpretation by the user now interpretation basically depends on your characteristics also so interpretation is proper or not right that also depends on our state so we should always be in a positive state of mind and we will be coming out with the very very positive information now first bit of information which we could derive from the data which uh, we 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 just uh, sh had shown right the student data where the student uh, enrollment number etc is appearing the first bit of information we can de derive from this data that is always there that this student has got uh, grade a b c d but i can derive information like frequency of grades which student has got what grade is derived from the table which we had shown but frequency of grade can be derived from the data which was there now that becomes a very useful information like uh, if i derive that information what you can see uh, the sh the shown data results into that a grade only one student has got an a grade b grade has been got b, b st four students have got b two students have got c d has been with two students and e there is one student and the color code what you can see here is minimum score happens to be 520 mean score which has been derived it can be derived from the table is 59.2 and maximum score 87.0 now can we interpret something from this particular information right or, or from this particular table this is an information right so can we interpret something yes we can interpret something in this that probably this is a course where the data the mean score happens to be 59.2 which uh, in general is slightly below average because uh, average score in general is first division these days so uh, this is uh, the, this particular course the students who have got slightly slightly uh, lesser score maximum score happens to be 87 but if it is a board uh, examination then 87 seems to be a very low score these days minimum score happens to be 20 in this particular case once uh, the mean score looks to be a slightly higher in uh, some context but uh, it is uh, it is uh, i mean minimum score we cannot comment much but <coughs> other things what we can see here they, there can be interpretation of the form that have the student got somewhat lower score than what in other courses student have got or not right so you can extract good information by comparing the tabulated information with another tabulated information right now another kind of information which can be derived from the student data once again if you just have the student enrollment data right we can simply count them right by counting them we get a pictorial form uh, we can then draw a graph of it uh, the one which the graph which we have shown in the picture is a bar graph right which shows the bca as well as cit data of the students now in bca what you can see the students the enrollment in the 2018 was 2000 uh, whereas in cit it was only 1500 okay and the bars are being shown total number of, total strength of the student happens to be 3500 then in 2019 you can see that there is an increase as in bca as well as in cit in both the scores there is an improvement however in 2020 there this is just a fictitious data please don't assume that there is a fall but just for the sake of demonstration that there is slight fall in the student enrollment as far as bca is concerned though 3000 there is uh, the cit data uh, 3456 is the same now what we we are getting information out of it right that cit data happens to be consistent now we may be looking okay that this is consistent why not there, there was an increase despite we have launched the online cit 
right? So they, they, then this is the kind of interpretation Then we have to uh, look into the reasons maybe thereafter, right? So we might move towards a different domain. So we might be trying to gather some more information, but that information then can lead to some knowledge, right? So we are now looking for the reasons. Whenever we are looking for reasons, we are moving into a domain of knowledge. Now, second thing which you can infer over here, that there is a decrease in uh, BCA enrollment. Now, can is this particular decrease because that BCA is not online? Maybe, okay? So, they can be, I mean, whenever we are moving, whenever we look into information, we start thinking, we start uh, evaluating, right? And once we do that, then we come up with some kind of interpretations, right? Those interpretations can lead to knowledge. So what is knowledge then? So knowledge consists of organized and processed information. So from uh, organized information, I mean, we organize that particular information and move to, uh, up, uh, I mean, process information, which basically gives us some knowledge. It should communicate understanding accumulated learning and expertise, something it should basically communicate to every user. It applies to contemporary problem or processes, just like what we have seen, okay, seen. The data was there, now the process is that admission process, right? So admission process, we started with the data, we created the information, and from information now we are trying to derive knowledge, that reason of that why CIT enrollment is still the same, it might have, I mean, maybe that uh, the cutoff date has not arrived, that's why it is still the same, so it is going to increase, and why it is, it is increasing? Because of some online program, so we have accumulated some knowledge out of it, learning, right? And this is from the expertise, because we have to look into the reasons, and once we look into the reasons of information, we develop, definitely develop some inf uh, knowledge. So knowledge is appropriate collection of useful information, right? Memorizing information, now this is a very important point which I'm going to discuss. Memorizing information can lead to amassed knowledge. For example, students learn multiplication table in mathematics, but that amassed knowledge information does not guarantee that student will be able to solve multiplication like 39 into 247. Such questions require analytical ability to, rec to recognize the problem and then use appropriate knowledge to solve these problems. So the basic context which I am trying to bring to you here is that it is not that by just memorizing information and you have amassed great amount of knowledge, but the applicability of that knowledge, right, whatever you have got is very, very important. The analysis of the information which you have received, right, is very, very important and it is to be converted into a knowledge, knowledge which is actionable, which when can be converted into some kind of, uh, some kind of, uh, I mean, uh, intelligent decision on part of you or some kind of intelligent behavior on part of you and some, uh, like solving a problem, right. Which, which you, uh, like, uh, you, suppose you are given the, the you, you know the, all the tables and you learn how to multiply uh, it two or three digit number, then you can apply that particular knowledge to any kind of domain. Any kind of number, you can go on to do any three digit num uh, multiplications. Then you can uh, probably extend your knowledge for four digit multiplication and so on and so forth. So it is very important that you put knowledge in the proper perspective. And you learn, I mean, you learn, you, use, you develop expertise of use of knowledge, right? So knowledge can represent a pattern that can be used to determine high level predictability for future events. Now, here we are moving, we are bringing another domain of knowledge, right? Knowledge can represent a pattern, like right? the pattern which we were trying to see, right? That can be used to determine high level of predictability of future trends, right? So future, you, whether this particular information will be used in future or not. Two examples I have uh, shown here are, for example, is that student enrollment information in various programs can be used to generate useful trends in enrollment data. The knowledge of these trends can lead to 
future demand for the programs, right? So basically predicting future demands, making available the adequate number of resources for fulfilling those demands. So that is how knowledge can be utilized, right? You are getting only information that this, today, this year that many students have taken admission, last year these many students have taken admission. But the knowledge which we are deriving of, of it is predictability, like how the future trends are going to be with this particular a kind of uh, inf information or this kind of data, behav uh, data behavior. And we, once we get the knowledge out of it, it can be very useful for future, uh, future information. Uh, future not information, future decision making. The student results information of past several years can be used to generate knowledge about the levels of support needed to each student. That's what I said. And identification of problems students face in course and pro providing extra help for these students. So we can also uh, think in terms of how we can provide extra help to a student. They are just like the information which we have got, okay, we knew that this particular course student have not performed that well. So then we look into the reasons of why students have not performed that well in that particular course. And once we know all the reasons, okay, then we can provide extra help to the students, right? So probably they need extra help in some topics, okay? So some extra help can be provided in those topics, okay? Maybe uh, it, may, it may go on to, uh, it may be that uh, some students we may be given uh, extra uh, problem solving hours for uh, doing certain activity. So that way we can utilize the knowledge and uh, information and knowledge for the benefit of ours. It should always be positive construction, although there are negative uh, constructions also, but we will emphasize as teachers that you should always be looking for positives out of information and knowledge. Okay, now the next we would like to discuss is data versus information and knowledge. Well, data is typically raw, right? Whereas information has some structure in it, okay? And knowledge is structured and coherent. There has to be a coherency, right? It is not that uh, we, we, like for BCA, the enrollment was down and we, we should say, oh, increasing trend in one case, so increasing ten, trend in all the cases. No, we have to take very conscious decisions on the basis of, uh, or we have to uh, see constant, uh, we have to bring in good knowledge which can be useful and coherent. Okay, uncorrelated facts are data. Information is related by transitory and may be short-lived as far as information is concerned, but long, knowledge has long-term significance, okay? It stays with us for a longer time, stays with us for different perspectives, stays with us in a sense that we are able to solve many different uh, cases uh, or problems in different situations. Therefore, knowledge is very, very important. So from different situations, we got to develop the knowledge which can be utilized for various uh, predictive behaviors and problem solving behaviors. Data is acquired from various data sources, right? So there can be multiple data. And these days we talk about big data, which is acquired from huge number of sources. Well, big data is somewhat different in the sense that it is somewhat heterogeneous, but uh, it, it, it is data, right? It is some form of data which requires some processing, right? Uh, however, big data processing, we will not be discussing in this particular course, right? Information is acquired by filtering and processing data, okay? Whatever kind of data it may be, but information is acquired by that. We have not dealt with different information processing uh, modes or methods in this particular course, once again, you should be aware. Then interpreting the information can lead to knowledge, right? So interpretation of information is very, very important. Therefore, what is most important when you are developing knowledge is thinking. If you think, if you try to think about various pieces of information which you are developing, okay, about that, you will be coming out with some knowledge about it, okay, some trends about it. So thinking is very, very important when you are trying to develop information. Data does not help in decision making, but it is 
it is a factor which brings in uh, the information and the knowledge. So in that particular sense, yes, it will be bringing in the change. But in itself, data is not sufficient for any kind of decision making. Why? Because it is just a large amount of data which is available to you. That's all. And uh, it's very difficult to get meaning out of large amount of data. However, information is somewhat of summarized data in some sense. So it is useful for decision making. Knowledge can be used for making decision in even in unforeseen situation. You can bring, uh, you can bring that particular knowledge which you have acquired from a particular domain to a different domain. And that makes knowledge very, very important for us. Finally, wisdom. So you have the data, you acquired the information from it and then you acquired knowledge from that. But wisdom assimilates knowledge and experience and allows us to be judgmental about the right kind of action in a given situation. And a typical example is the knowledge about students learning, technological development and future job opportunities. So multiple knowledge, multiple, uh, knowledge uh, sources and uh, information sources we are collecting, right? And from those sources, we are bringing uh, the wisdom, like we may take, this allows us to take wise decision about the future ed education curriculum, like what kind of courses should be taught to the student, what kind of technology students should be uh, working on so that they become uh, good, better and they become employable, they become, uh, I mean, self-employable or all those kinds of things. So all these things then lead to a lot of wisdom. So wisdom is the epitome, right? We start from the data, then we move to the uh, to information, then we move to the knowledge and then from knowledge we from lot of knowledge, we acquire wisdom. And wisdom is, it stays with us for a very, very long time. It brings a lot of expertise in us. It brings uh, the kind of skills to us so that we can, uh, we can even create newer situation and we can solve uh, problems under different situations which we have created, which different environments which we have created, such as uh, newer learning paradigm we can create, okay? So this is how data, information, knowledge, and, uh, and uh, wisdom are related. So let me summarize what we have discussed in this particular session. First, we define the term data. And data is very raw, right? That data does not bring in a lot of any meaning to us. Though some meaning is communicated, but not a big meaning, some meaning is there. Information brings in some meaning. We process data and create information. So it brings some meaning to us. It, is, it can be represented in the form of pictures as well as uh, some kind of uh, what we say tables, pictures, graphs, information can be represented. From the interpret in, uh, interpretation, like analysis of information, we can develop knowledge. And from lot of knowledge, we generate wisdom within us, right? And wisdom is very, very important for knowledge, wisdom, information, data. They are very important for surviving in, the, uh, in this particular world. So be, I mean, learn this particular concept very well. Thank you so much. Bye for now.